I'll give you a quick update on the markets and my thoughts on Uniswap sued by the SEC, which I actually felt a bit emotional about, because innovation has always been such a big part of my life. This is Uniswap cumulative trading volume, and this is in trillions of dollars, and it's growing up towards 2 trillion dollars. And while for example today's daily trading volume of 1.5 billion dollars is less than the centralized exchange like Coinbase 2.2 billion dollars or Binance 21 billion dollars. It's not that far away. How many employees does Coinbase have? 3416. I tried to figure out how much trading volume Nasdaq has and then you end up with a PowerPoint presentation, which somehow sums up the difference. Here I found some data saying 258 billion dollars, but that definitely doesn't align with this figure on Wikipedia that says 1262 billion dollars per month, so that would be 42 billion dollars per day, which is more, but they can be compared in the same graph. And people keep using it. Trillions of dollars. It's a lot of money, guys. And it's run by this piece of code. This invention from Hayden Adams. The Uniswap protocol. And of course others around him. Was the automated market maker. The DEX concept as such wasn't new. There was a DEX on Ethereum called Ether Delta already in 2017 when I came into crypto seven years ago. It looked like this and it worked. It was clunky, but it was a smart contract which worked pretty much like a centralized exchange connecting buy orders with sell orders. Also written by one guy I think. But it had a few problems. The most obvious one was that Ethereum was pretty slow and expensive already then. So you submitted an order and then your transaction gets stuck because you paid too little fees. So you don't know for eight hours if your transaction will go through or not. But the other problem was more subtle. There were no market makers. So in practice, you usually couldn't execute any trade, because usually it didn't look this ideal. Typically, there was no one on the other side putting orders at that time. So in practice, it wasn't that useful. And I didn't in practice use it beyond testing. It was that problem, the absence of market makers, that Uniswap solved. The invention was really automated market makers. Code that is always ready to accept one token for another, following a formula instead. Because there are these liquidity providers that provide tokens into a reserve pool, where each Uniswap smart contract or pair manages this liquidity pool made up of two different tokens, where you can then swap between them, and then enabling anyone to become one of these liquidity providers, thereby creating this whole ecosystem. So this algorithm for automated market makers means that if you want to buy or sell your favorite memed coin right now, you can. You can execute the trade even if there is no physical person placing orders in the opposite direction at the matching price exactly now. That was a new invention. And it was a brilliant invention. Suddenly it worked in practice, even though Ethereum now was even more expensive and congested than back in 2017. And usage of the protocol skyrocketed. Suddenly this open source software could compete with exchanges employing thousands of people. Both the PowerPoint ones from the last era and the native era digitalis companies like crypto exchanges. And it's a piece of code. It runs itself. There's not even any servers executing those smart contracts because we have these amazing decentralized supercomputers called Ethereum and hundreds of similar blockchains. It's like TCP IP shuffling packets. Except here, the data is also public. Because you can go in on Etherscan and look straight into the data and look at the smart contract. And there are these companies doing nothing else than crunching all the data of a blockchain and making sense of it. The code is public. The data is public. 
to everyone on the internet. There's never been such a transparent system of brokering trades between party A and party B. And now, four years later comes the regulator. Broker. Did someone say broker? But you haven't filled out the form. You haven't done the broker registration. And don't get me wrong. I think we must have strong rules in society for something like brokers. I'm not some libertarian rebel thinking that everyone should be allowed to do whatever they want and so on. I'm not. I don't think that works. I'm pro clear rules in society. I don't mind paying my taxes. That's not the problem. The problem is that those rules were written almost 100 years ago to solve a different problem. If you have human brokers, if you don't run strict registration and audits and checks on them, they will start doing dodgy stuff like fake orders or insert their own order just before executing a big one from someone else. Perhaps not immediately, but suddenly that guy develops a crack addiction, gets an expensive mistress, and before you know it, he's printing fake order entries on a dot matrix printer in the basement. Hurting investors. Need rules need the SEC to enforce it. But now they're trying to take those same rules. Okay, I exaggerate, it's not 100 years ago, it's only 80 years ago, or whatever rules it is, and apply it on this protocol. Uniswap is a protocol. This piece of open source software with open public and transparent data. As you know, I played a role in creating the mobile data protocols 2D, 3D, 4D, 5D. Imagine if some authority had come and said that, but have you filled out the wire registration form? But uh, sir, this is wireless. Uh, that's the invention. No, but these rules are from 1946 and it applies the same to everyone. You have to fill out the wire registration form. Okay, sir, but how should I fill it out? What should I write here where it says wire specification? We don't have any wires. It's uh, wireless. What? <laughs> You're not compliant to the wire form. Wells notice. Indictment. Arrest. Prison! Then the objection is that yeah, but Uniswap is also a company or an organization. At least it has people, physical people. It's not only a protocol. Yes, but the same was true with telecom. It was physical people at predominantly Ericsson where I worked. It's exactly the same. And it was exactly the same with every single of the today largest American companies by market cap. It was a young Bill Gates disrupting the IBM mainframe dominance. Where is the mainframe registration form? Bill, oh, actually we're not using mainframes. What? Prison failure to register the mainframe form. Apple. I don't even need to articulate all the industries that Steve Jobs disrupted. You all know it. Jensen Wang. Nvidia. Actually, I read an interesting insight that the reason the two biggest fields of innovation in the 2020s are crypto and AI is because both are derived from math. And math was the last field that you were allowed to tinker around in without getting arrested for disruption. Larry Page and Sergey Brin. Amazon. Imagine how many businesses Jeff Bezos disrupted. Prison didn't comply with the physical shop registration forms. Facebook, Instagram, WhatsApp. And now we have this guy, Hayden.eth, who stays in the US trying to follow the rules, but he can't fill out today's version of the wire registration form, the mainframe registration form, the physical shop registration form, because there isn't a physical broker. It's this piece of code which renders the entire previous system obsolete. I'm not saying that we don't need rules because there is a new technology here. We do. Otherwise, there would be someone writing a fraudulent version of this, where the programmer inserts his own orders just before a big order comes in, which is called front run. 
I'm not saying that we don't need rules. I'm saying we need new rules for a new technology generation. The SEC previously went after Coinbase Wallet, also software, and saying that this is a broker. But here this judge actually sided with Coinbase, saying that the SEC's allegations do not implicate many of the factors courts use in identifying a broker. Notably, the SEC does not allege that the wallet application negotiates terms for the transaction, makes investment recommendations, arranges financing, holds customer funds, process trade documentation, or conducts independent asset valuation. So upon closer examination, these allegations alone or in combinations are insufficient to establish brokerage activities. But if reading this point by point by someone who just wants to apply the old rules on the new software could come to a different conclusion with Uniswap. Perhaps they do create asset valuation. Perhaps they do negotiate terms for the transaction, arranges finances or temporarily holds customer funds. I'm not saying I have that opinion. I'm saying if someone tries to read this like the devil reads the Bible by someone who says that we're gonna apply these good rules to protect investors from the crack addict with a dot matrix printer. And we're gonna apply them on this software. And if they can't comply because they can't fill out the form because there actually is no broker, we will stop disruption and protect the legacy. Now, I don't know in which direction this will go. I'm not a lawyer, I'm not an expert in that field, but I'm surprised by the lack of understanding for the importance of innovation. Are the people in power in the US blind? Can they not read this? Largest American companies by market cap. And it says Microsoft, Apple, Nvidia, Alphabet, Amazon, Meta. And then comes Berkshire Hathaway that made a big investment in Apple. Every single one of the six biggest companies in the US are tech companies. And then we're not even counting Elon Musk's companies because there are several. And they all started exactly like Uniswap, with one good idea by one or a couple of guys. Are they blind or why are they not trying to protect innovation? In Era Digitalis, it will be countries that are pro-innovation, that are actively trying to attract the new digital innovators. Like El Salvador, like Dubai, like Singapore, like Cyprus, like Switzerland with Zouk, that will move positions forward. And many other countries in Southeast Asia. While many legacy countries in the West are now trying to resist change. This specific technology is so much more efficient that it will win. It's a thousand times cheaper, a million times more efficient. Software disruption in a nutshell. Larry Fink gets it. The head honcho for the traditional finance. He gets it. But these politicians don't. The question isn't which technology will win. This piece of software or these 8,525 employees. The only question is which legacy countries in Europe and in North America will be left behind in the end. That's the only question. That's the decision to take. You can't stop era digitalis. You can't stop software disruption. This protocol and all the others like it that came afterwards are too useful. That has already happened now. These are slow changes happening over decades, but it is happening. So I don't know, think carefully about where you buy your real estate if you are having a multi-decade horizon because the world is changing. Talk to your politicians. Maybe they don't know that all the companies are tech companies now. Maybe they haven't thought about that we need to protect the next generation of innovators. It was easier to play around during those days because basically all the politicians thought that this computer thing and this internet thing was just some detail that's gonna go away soon. They didn't understand that we're gonna end up like this. Before we go into Bitcoin price, I didn't make any YouTube videos this week, but it's not because I've gotten lazy. It's because I've focused on something which will bring more value to you guys in about two weeks. 
Actually, I worked very hard yesterday. Early morning to office. Coffee. Super focus. Coffee. Lunch by computer. Coffee. Take out sushi by the computer. More coffee. Close the computer at 1 a.m. and went home. Up 6 a.m. with the kids. Eat breakfast with them. Back to the office. And you guessed it. Focus. More coffee. This has been roughly my schedule for the past couple of weeks. There is no work smart. You have to both work smart and hard in seasons. Then you can have another season where you spend more time with the family and so on. But to build anything great, you need to focus. And yesterday I finished. It's fantastic. Now I will test it and then tell you about it in about two weeks. So stay tuned. And don't worry, I'm not adding any offers. I promised you that from the start. All additions will be included if you are a member. So make sure you've taken the course that you are on pro. CTOLarson.com. I don't have any other website. Don't get scammed somewhere else. That's not me. I have two market observations to offer you today. One is this level, 70,000. 800. I mentioned it already two weeks ago in that Friday TA report. The pattern has been that every time price comes over 70,800, boom, there comes a sell order and price is down below. It has happened 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 times. I'm not giving you some solar eclipse alpha here, guys. You have to be blind to not see it. So that's the key resistance level to monitor. We broke it once, but as you saw, that quickly reverted. The other recent thing that has happened is really this spike in yields. Here I'm showing the inverse of the yield, so the movements become in the same direction, preceding this drop in yields. And at the actual drop, Bitcoin had this drop. And then as yields came back down, meaning the reverse points upwards, Bitcoin has also recovered a little bit. But over the medium term, over a couple of months, Bitcoin has resisted this pump in yields, represented here as a drop in the inverse of the yield. If we zoom out and look at Bitcoin in isolation. The trend is up. Larson line is gold. So that's good. And um, I mean, the chart constructions are still bullish here. That hasn't changed. So I'm watching that resistance level for a breakout. As you know, I like to think in scenarios. So that is one scenario. But there could also be a possibility that it's uh, sell the new situation of the halving. And I'm planning for both scenarios personally. Friends of the day, entertaining. Yes, we are entertained. Smart, best TA and the coolest European on YouTube. I want to be the coolest European. I'll work on it, but thank you. Telma, also oh, kind of you. CTO is the smartest person I know. He has the whole package, book smart, business smart, emotional intelligence, tech intelligence, people skill is fit, but Sorry, I'm married with kids. I want to learn as much from CTO Larson as possible. That I can offer. And Adrian, thank you for the very kind words. And congrats to your and everyone else's success. Stay tuned. Thank you, Tuck. CTO Larson out. In Brooklyn's labs, a storm brews. SEC's notice, a fight ensues. Innovation fuels my life's theme. Like TCP, IP, a data stream, public ledger, open site. FA scan invites day and night. Data crunchers making sense of blockchain's vast deep expense. Code is public, so's the data. Transparent trading node in the strata. A system clear for A to B No secrets here, just liberty And now the regulators call Broker, echoes in the hall Uniswap stands ready, fierce for Decentral's future They persevere And now the regulators call Broker echoes in the hall. Uniswap stands ready, fierce for descent's future. They persevere. And now the regulators call. Broker echoes in the hall. Uniswap stands ready, fierce for decentral's future. They persevere. Ah.